Priscilla. Don't say it. I'll be your host. Okay. <laughs> Still come. Why? Why is that happening? I don't know. Anyway, welcome or welcome back. Um, it's Friday, December 15th. Uh, I had hoped to get back this weekend, this weekend, this week, I had hoped this week to have done a tag video and I hope today to be doing like a November wrap up video, but uh, my uh, husband was sick this week, earlier this week with a cold. He feels a lot better now and he, uh, so he was home and I couldn't really film and then also I was studying. I was studying. I studied, studied, studied because yesterday I had my final um, Dutch language exam, uh, <clears throat> which was the speaking exam, <laughs> which is my worst, my absolute worst uh, area. So I had to take a, a, a reading, a listening, a writing, and a speaking. And I had done the other three, I've, and I know that I passed the reading and the listening, so we're all good there. I haven't gotten the results on the writing exam yet. I took that two weeks ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. And yesterday was speaking and oh, <laughs> it was not great. It was not great. Uh, I practiced and practiced and practiced, but I really get very nervous about speaking. It's like, my brain shuts down and I lose words. And so I can understand what someone's asking, but I can't seem to, it's like, it's almost like I have a physical, like swelling at the back of my tongue, you know, and my, my ears start ringing. Uh, so <laughs> this exam, you have like, it's 24, it's 24 questions and you have 35 minutes. And the first 12 questions, you, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, like the first 10 questions, it's a video of somebody asking you a question, or two questions, actually. And it's, it's they're simple questions. They're not difficult questions, because this is only what's called A2 level, which is, like, you're functional. You're, you are, like, function, you can function at very basic type of things. So... <laughs> Uh, you know, it was pretty straightforward, really. It really was. And I was I was okay, mostly, except a couple of things. Like, one was that the person would, you know, come in the video and then ask a couple of questions. And it, it's things like, um, what kind of TV programs do you like to watch? And where do you watch them and with who? Or wh wh why do you like that kind of program? <clears throat> Something like that. And... I, <laughs> so I would hit that you, you're in a carol and you're, so you're kind of isolated sort of, and they give you a headset with a microphone and you put this thing on. They are not noise canceling. <clears throat> they are not noise canceling headsets. And the, the booths next to you are empty and then, or the carols next to you are empty. And then there's somebody at either, on either side of you. And I had two very loud gentlemen on either side of me and you're not getting the same questions and so I could hear like the guy next to me actually answering a question about like what kind of music he liked while I'm trying to answer a question about where I like to shop <laughs> you know and I'm like I uh, uh you know oh I shop at rock music <laughs> you know and so there's that and then 
there was the, you know, that I would be so nervous and trying to get the first question right. And I'd hit the record button and I would, I would answer the question and I would, you know, give my answer and it would be just fine. And then I would just blank. Wait, wait what? What? What's the second question? <laughs> I couldn't remember the second question. I couldn't remember. Am I supposed to say why I like it? Am I supposed to say where I do it? Am I supposed to say who I do this with? <sighs> so, so there was that. And then on one particular question, I could not, I could not really understand. Well, I understood the question, but I didn't understand what it was about because the key word in the question, I didn't remember. I couldn't remember what the word meant. I couldn't remember what the word meant in English. And and this was so the it was basically like this it was and and yeah okay i'm not it's not going to sound great i know i know uh but it was basically nederlands heeft veel verkeer how find you that and <laughs> and waarom <laughs> okay verkeer i could not remember what verkeer meant and guess what playing the question five times did not help me remember so I was like, well, I don't know. I don't know. Is it a, is it kind of architecture? Is it is it food? I don't remember what it is. So I was like, okay, okay, I'll just answer the question. I'll answer the question <laughs> anyway, and then I'll come back to it. Because I thought maybe if I kept going in through the exam, for this because of the second half of the exam is like um multiple you're answering multiple choice questions you're watching a video and answering multiple choice questions and I thought well maybe there will be some context you know maybe I'll hear the word and I'll like I'll get it and I'll be like oh over here okay no problem any problem okay so I well that didn't happen but I recorded an answer I recorded an answer which was ich find viel verkehr heel leuk het is mooi Oh, okay, which means, you know, I find it really nice. It's beautiful. It's lovely. Okay, great. So I get done. I finish up my test and I, I, I had like three or four minutes to spare. I go out, I get my stuff out of my locker and I get, put my coat on, do everything. And I'm walking to the train and I open Google Translate and I type in Verkir and it means traffic. I find traffic really nice. I think it's beautiful. Oh, okay. So I've changed locations. <laughs> and I hope that the lights are not flickering. I don't know what is going on with my background. Yeah, hang on a second. Okay. So anyway, new location. Oh, oh, I had to move because the, the fairy lights that are behind my desk, I still have not figured out how to get them not to flicker in the video. And I have looked up everything and I've tried changing my settings and it just, they still flicker. So I don't want to, there's Chloe <laughs> skulking around <laughs> looking for affection. <laughs> on camera and you're not paying attention to me uh, well I'll pay I'll pay for it later um, so yeah so here I am over here <laughs> you've been here you've been over here with me before anyway yeah so that was my exam um, I've got like 10 minutes until I'm supposed to be on a call and I guess that is a nice segue into yeah, I yeah, I'd hoped to get some other videos done this week and I didn't. And so this is just a chatty hello and yeah, I guess I'm updating you on the exams. I don't know if you care about that or not. Uh, I'm reading. Uh, I'm still listening to um, My Name is Lucy Barton and really, really enjoying that in audio. And I also did go ahead and start reading O. William. And I'm about 25% of the way through that. It's a really little book. 
I cannot find my hard copy. I think I loaned, because I can't find my hard copy of My Name is Lucy Barton either. I think that I loaned them to somebody in my writer's group. So luckily I have, I have ebook versions of both of those books. And then I also have obviously the audio of My Name is Lucy Barton on Spotify. Um, probably O. William is on there as well. And I may listen to it at some point. And then I've still got my copy of Lucy by the Sea, which I'm hoping I will get through the first two this weekend. Um, and then I will read Lucy by the Sea next week. And then I will read, um, probably I'm going to read The Robber Bride for Remember December, I think. I think. So. And then let's see what else to update you. Oh, I, I. I did the booktube spin. The booktube spin books that I that I ended up with were The Family Esquierdo, Esquierdo, I think is the name of it. I can't remember the author's name. Um I'll I'll pop it up. I'll put it in. And then also Conviction um by D Denise Mina. So those are my two books for the booktube spin. I have to read those two by March 30th. So we, we get a, a little extra time on this spin. Usually I think it's two months. We get a little extra time um, since it's starting at the beginning of December. So that's what I've got sort of on, uh, on my plate right now in terms of reading. So we'll see how that goes. Usually things slow down this time of year at work, but this year they're not slowing down. It, it, they're speeding up. I think I talked about that last week. And so my reading plans are just kind of, and, and my video plans and all my plans, all my plans, uh, to do things, uh, holiday-ish or to feel holiday-ish have been kind of disrupted. It's, I'm hardly the only one. This seems to be happening to lots of people I know, and I'm hearing lots of people on booktube and on social media well instagram's really the only other social media that i'm on but um you know say the same thing that that in things aren't really in their own lives um really slowing down even though everybody kind of seems to really want to slow down this year which i <laughs> you know uh it seems like people really want to be in the holiday spirit this year and that doesn't always uh happen but Maybe it's just things have seemed kind of dark and it, we all need it this year. Uh, what with what's going on in the world and so on and so forth. So I'm going to break for a minute because I'm getting like eight text messages from people and I have to go do my meeting. So, okay, I'll be back. I'll be back because I wanted to talk about a couple of other things. What do you see, Moxie? What do you see, Moxie? tour of our Christmas decorations. Got the mantle all decorated up. I hope that I don't have the light flashing problem. Here I am. Hello, that's me in my pajamas. Not cleaned up yet. I think the lights are going to flash. I don't know why. I, those, those lights, like the other lights behind my desk, are on a, uh, oh, what do, what do I want to call it? A, uh, 
like a converter because those are lights from the United States that we still have here. We have these little, um, these little houses. These are from the lottery. These are from the postcode lottery here in the Netherlands. <laughs> and they have little giveaways every year at the holidays. And last year and this year, it's these little houses. And I hope that they do it again next year because I think there are eight houses and you get, we get two a year. And they actually have little uh, electric candles in them, or not electric, but battery operated candles that light up the windows and it's very nice. You can see tour boats going by. It's a gray, gray day out there. It's not very cold. It's actually not very cold. Here's our tree. I showed that before. Kitty cat ornament. That's an ornament that represents our, our kitty cat that we used to have, Diva. But she passed away in 2012. She was the sweetest little kitty. And the outside. Gray. I actually really like this weather. It's been kind of a beautiful weekend. It's not been too cold. The air feels a little bit damp. Um, it would be nice if it was colder, I guess. But it's going to get very windy this week and I do not like the wind. That's the one thing I definitely don't like. So, yeah, a little a little view of Christmas and our little Amsterdam apartment. And of course, no cozy Christmas video is complete without the sleeping kitty cat. Little Moxie, so lazy and enjoying the the heat from the fan on my husband's laptop. It's probably so dusty. You can probably see how dusty it is. Ah. Bookshelves, which I will try not to show the top. I can't really show the top because of the lights flashing. Okay. Whip around. Whip around. Give you a whiplash. Okay. All right. Enough tour. This lash, I can you tell over underhoud and volume cable. Allereerst regels over afval. In Nederland vinden mensen het belangrijk dat je netjes met afval omgaat. Dus dat we afval ook goed sorteren. Hè? Glas bij het glas, plastic bij het plastic, groen bij het groen. Ja, goed sorteren vinden we belangrijk. En in de meeste. Hey everyone. Well, it's Monday. It's Monday afternoon. And uh, I meant to. I, I actually did. Uh, record something yesterday. I I did a long recording actually about <laughs> I did a long recording about um, O. William, which I was halfway through yesterday, or more than halfway through, about seventy percent through yesterday. But I finished it this morning, and I wasn't really. I didn't really. I was watching it back, and I was like, eh, I don't like that. So <laughs> here I am. Um, and I will just say, I don't know what was wrong with me. Um, this book was wonderful. I absolutely loved it. I don't know why I it didn't resonate with me the first time. And I looked back. One thing I did do was look back and see when I read it. Because for some reason I had it in my mind that this book came out in the spring of 2022 and it actually came out in October of 2021. And I think that was right before our last big lockdown, which happened in December of 2021 and went through March of 2022. And I think like everybody else in the world, I was just weary maybe. I mean, but I don't know. I mean, this is not a book about... COVID at all. It's set just before, actually. It's set in the summer of 2019 is when the main action takes place in a William. And it, I've started Lucy by the Sea <laughs> already, rereading it, because this is the next book. And this book takes place, this book starts in March of 2020. 
So you've got this one ends like October 2019. And yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure because I just really absolutely loved it this time through. I So O William is and I haven't finished I haven't finished Lucy Barton yet. I haven't finished listening to it. But since I've read it like three or four times, um, I didn't, I was like, I'm not going to let that stop me. I don't want to get behind in the other things that I want to read this month, which is just the two other books, just Lucy by the Sea. And then uh, probably The Robber Bride will be my other book for Remember December, which is a book that you read it with, to see what you thought about it because you don't remember, really remember it at all. Um... But this was the book that was read it and see how you feel about it again. Like if, you know, if you didn't like it the first time or if you really loved it, did you do now not like it? And I just, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Um, so as I said, it's, it's set in 2019 and um, it's really about, it's, it's in the first person. It's Lucy Barton telling us the story of what is happening in her ex-husband William's life. William was her first husband. She was married to him for 20 years. They had two daughters together and they have been apart for as many years now. They have been apart for 20 years and Lucy um, had married again. She married a man named David Abramson and he has recently passed away uh, in the past year. And so she is a widow now, and but she has over the 20 years since she separated from William, um, they have become, they've been friendly, they are close, uh, they are both close to their daughters, and so in a way they still have a sort of family unit. William is on his third marriage um, to a woman named Estelle, who is, I think, 20 something years his junior and he has an, another daughter with Estelle um, named Becca no I'm sorry named Bethany <laughs> Becca is the Chris <laughs> Becca is the daughter that he has one of the daughters that he has with Lucy um, Bethany and um, she is I think she's like 12 years old I don't, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Anyway, she's about, I think she's about 11 or 12 years old. So, um, the book really centers on two critical things that happened to William over like the summer of 2019 and how Lucy sort of helps him with that. Uh, one is that his wife, his third marriage ends, his wife leaves him. And then the second one is something that he learns um, about his family. And that's, that is a shock to him. And that sort of leads on, uh, leads him to go on an investigation. And Lucy goes along with him on that investigation. And they continue to learn things about um, William's deceased mother, whom Lucy was also very close to when she and William were married. Um, Catherine Cole is is what they call her, is what her name, I think her married name was Catherine Gerhardt, but Catherine Cole was her maiden name. And so uh, this is this is as same as Lucy Barton. It's told in the first person. Um, it's very direct. And I was thinking about how she writes as Lucy um, and how Lucy is talking to us. And I was realizing that one of the very interesting things about both My Name is Lucy Barton and O. William and Lucy by the Sea is that, is how we see Lucy. Because Lucy is a very successful writer. She's a famous writer. Like at one point, she and William are up in Maine and they are, they've gone into a public library and they are doing, um, they are, uh, they're wanting to look up some information about William's father, who was a German man who had come to America 
he was a POW, and then he went back, he was sent back to Germany in World War II, and then he returned to the United States and married William's mother. And they are in the town where this occurred, where his father was a POW or nearby, and they're doing some research, and then when they're, you know, going out, they're leaving the library, the librarian asks Lucy to to sign, there's a stack of her books, and the, and the librarian says, could you sign the books? So, you know, she's, she's, and she talks about book tours and book events and writing her books, and she's written novels, and she's written a memoir um, that, I can't remember if she talks about the memoir in Lucy Barton, I think she does, but it also, the memoir comes up and is one of the, kind of a, a pivotal, a, a, a pivot point for the short connected stories in Anything is Possible, which are which is about, I'm gosh, Illinois, which is where she is from. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, which is where Lucy grew up, um, and about her brother and her sister and the other people in that community. And um, in that book, one of the things is that her memoir has just come out and some of the characters read it or talk about it or talk about her family. And then also her, her brother and her sister um, take a part in that. Anyway, I've been, I was thinking about the fact that the Lucy that we know is only this sort of direct to us private Lucy. I mean, we see her interacting with William and with Chrissy and Becca. So we know how she interacts with those people and we... We know how she thinks they think of her because we're getting it all through her eyes. Um, but we, you know, we don't, we don't really know Lucy. We, we know these things about her, but we also don't know how she really is as a writer and we don't know her writing. We don't know what kind of writer she is or what she writes about. And I find that really fascinating. And I haven't really thought about that before, <laughs> but... I started thinking about it while I was reading a William because it it sort of comes up that it just her being on a tour or her going to do an event or these kinds of things um, and then people recognizing her and then there is a pivotal moment in this in O William where a, a key character tells her that they have read all of her books um, and it just made me so curious but there's a lot of reflection here from Lucy on William and about their marriage and about herself and about how she left the marriage and what happened afterward and how William was. But I would say, you know, mostly the book is concerned, uh, it's her being concerned about and for William and for her trying to help him along this sort of crisis moment in his life. And yeah, I don't, I, I really don't know why I was irritated by her because I really wasn't at all this time through. And I don't know if it's just that she's grown on me or that just, I had such a different feeling about her and picture of her after I read Lucy by the Sea and what she goes through in that book that I took that back to O. William. And these books are just, I mean, she almost probably could have just made this like part two because of the way this is and what it reveals about their relationship, what these books reveal about their relationship and about their family with their daughters and about their lives apart and together. So... I'm really excited to be reading Lucy by the Sea again. Um, I guess another thing I did think about with Lucy a little bit was that, you know, sometimes we don't, we don't, sometimes we don't like people who remind us of ourselves. <laughs> and Lucy sometimes reminds me of myself. Um, some of her annoying habits that she has <laughs> I, I sort of remind me of of me like and I think about that because that's a weird thing to say or to sort of confess because 
you know, she's so this she's very intimate. Her her narration and what she's telling us, she's telling us her innermost thoughts. She's telling us things that probably she's not going to stand up in a in a crowd and say. She's not going to necessarily talk about. Although I think Lucy is a person who has a lot of vulnerability and isn't necessarily afraid to show that vulnerability, which is very different from Olive Kittredge. Um, and I was thinking about that too, because I love Olive Kittredge and she's probably, she's still my favorite character. She's still my favorite Strout character, but Lucy and Olive have a lot in common, really. Um, Olive didn't grow up in abject poverty, but she did grow up in a small town. Um, and they both, I think, have the difficulty of their fathers and their, both of their fathers having um, difficulties um, with mental illness. And I don't want to, I, I don't think it's a spoiler. Um, it's not like it comes up as a surprise that I think if you have read Olive Kittredge, that Olive's father had committed suicide, I think, when she was a young adult. And so, and, and Olive herself is also, she's a very vulnerable character. She has a lot of, she's very sensitive. She's highly sensitive, actually, but she has such an armor. And she is also, she's very guarded. And she doesn't want anybody to see her sadness. And I think Lucy... Although she certainly does not want anybody to have a negative view of her, she doesn't seem to be as afraid of people seeing her vulner vulnerability. Um, in fact, it's it's sort of, I think, at one point in the book, William says that she's full of joy, and she's always been full of joy and that she's unique. And I think that's one of the things that would make her unique is that she's so able to be open and vulnerable in a way that is not, uh, it doesn't make people uncomfortable, but it makes them, you know, feel maybe protective of her, but also that they, that she sort of shines on them. So, and so that's very different from Olive. Um, and, you know, yeah, it just, it was so, so good. I really loved it. And the other thing was that while I was reading this book, I started to think about um, the books by Kent Hariff. I don't know if you would call it, I think all of his books are set in Holtz, which is the, a fictional town in Colorado. Um, I believe it's on the eastern border of Colorado in Kansas. And yeah, I think all of his novels are set there, but for sure his three novels that sort of make up a trilogy Plain Song, Eventide, and Benediction. And in particular, I was thinking about um, Benediction. Uh, and it was making me, uh, this trip that they take back and the things that they learn about Catherine Cole and the things that Lucy talks about her own life and then the parallels that she starts to see or things that she starts to understand about Catherine. Um, made me think about those books and also how uh, Harif has, you know, he creates an entire community in Holtz and he has, he goes through and has multiple perspectives in a lot of his books. So you, it's multi point of view and you jump around, not so much here, but definitely in Lucy by the Sea, uh, she's, Strout is starting to bridge the worlds of all of Kittredge and, and Lucy Barton, which in, in very interesting ways and bring in characters from other of her books. Um, and she'd started doing that in all, of, in all of Again, the second Olive Kittredge book. And then that's something now that she is sort of content. She did it a little bit in O. William, and now she's continuing that to do that in Lucy by the Sea. And I won't say who, and I won't say what, but it's very interesting who shows up and how, and how those how those worlds are kind of coming together. And I'm going to be so interested to see what she does with her next book and who shows up uh, 
for and with who uh, because I really love all these characters. And one character that I love in oh, in, in oh, Lucy by the Sea, sorry, which I should wait and talk about that later. But he, he kind of makes a weird tangential appearance in Oh, William is Bob Burgess from the Burgess Boys, which is the, my least favorite Strout that I've read. I only have one other Strout book that I haven't read, and that's Abide With Me. And I think that's Sarah at Roadworthy, and I said we might buddy read that early next year. Um, but I didn't particularly like the Burgess Boys. I had gotten it a long time ago. I read it before it was published. I had got an arc from NetGalley, and I was so excited to read it. And because I had read Amy and Isabel, and I had read Olive Kittredge, and just loved both of them so much. And I liked the Burgess family, and I liked that part of the story, but the part with the, um, I believe it's, is it Somali, Somali immigrants? Oh, I'll have to look. I'll have to put a correction up. Um, no, 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 that's not right. It's not Somali. Anyway, uh, I didn't feel like, I just didn't feel like it worked. I didn't feel like the two... The, all the writing was good and the stories were fine, but it just didn't feel like what she tried to do with bringing those two worlds together. It just didn't really work for me. I just felt, it felt like it fell flat. Anyway, anyway. Um, Bob's wife, Pam, shows up in O. William, uh, his ex-wife, Pam, and then Bob shows up here in Lucy by the Sea. So, yeah. I, I really like that. I really love that. Um, it's very, very cool. But the the Kent Harreth books, he does deal with some of the same themes. And especially in terms of like with Lucy Barton and, and you know, being from a small town and people coming from nothing and making something of themselves and that kind of community and then their children leaving and then maybe leaving for all kinds of reasons you know maybe because their parents don't understand them or they're estranged but that they still are you know feel like they want to connect um yeah that's all there too so yeah anyway i guess that's about it that's a long that's a long chatty chat uh <laughs> So I'm going to go on and read Lucy by the Sea. I'm sorry about this lighting. It's just, I don't know. I don't, it may just be something that's, things are going to look kind of grainy and like I'm reporting in from the 1978 on a, on your, on your RCA console television. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's okay. That's cool. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, oh. And so, yeah, I did have one other thing. This is going to be the longest vlog or whatever, but uh, I, I had a thousand subscribers over the weekend and I had put a little post up on, on YouTube. And of course, then the minute I put the post up and I, I'm so excited, I was very excited because I was just checking a comment and I saw the comment and I saw that and I got very excited and I should have just waited. I should have waited like a week. But of course, the minute I posted that, it like went down again. <laughs> I felt like a big dork, but that's okay. Um, I am a big dork. I think we all know that. Uh, however, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. And I probably shouldn't be putting this at the end. I should be putting this at the beginning. So I'll probably just need to re-record something and stick it at the front of the video. Because I just appreciate you so much. I appreciate you coming by and watching and hanging out with me and commenting. And it's just, it's really nice. Uh, it's just a really nice feeling. And I really do appreciate it more than you know. And I really uh, needed it. Um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, yeah. I. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, before I get like all teary or something, 
just thank you so much. Thanks very much. Let me know what's going on with you. Let me know how you are in the comments. Let me know what you're reading and how things are. Uh, I do, yeah, I think I said maybe I could do a q and A. I I don't know if anyone would be interested in a and a Maybe I'll, I'll pop, like I said, maybe I'll just pop something at the beginning of this and, you know, yeah. Maybe I'll edit this part out and put that at the start, but yeah. So take care out there. Thank you for being here and listening to me babble and uh, have a great rest of the day, I guess. <laughs> Why am I having so much trouble signing off? Thank you. Thank you for being here. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>